skeleton clock is finish the escapement. You know, what I previously showed is uh, up to this point, and I needed material to make these pallets. The pallets are what engage uh, with the escape wheel. You can see them uh, on the drawing down here. They're made out of steel. They need to be hardened. And this 45 degree angle is very critical. This angle is what actually make, keeps the pendulum running. Because as this escapement engages, goes back and forth uh, with the pendulum, and it's what puts the energy into the clock, and it also regulates time. So it's really the most important part. It's the heart of this clock. Um, I've got it drawn up in Fusion. Uh, so we've got this thing ready. It's a, it's a fairly uh, simple operation. The way it's normally made is bending steel, but with the uh, mill, I'm going to attempt to just uh, get this uh, arc and make it all out of one piece of steel, just mill this thing out, the, the two different pallets. Uh, then we'll need to put these holes in like I did previously, and then we'll show how we uh, harden the steel um, and get this uh, part finished. Once we finish this, it'll start uh, uh, getting close to being a clock. Um, and we'll start uh, into the future episodes where I think it'll get more interesting as we start uh, putting components together and seeing how this whole thing is going to work as a system. So I'll get started on, uh, on making these two steel parts. So we've got to get the part set up uh, on the fourth axis. Uh, you can see I've got it in a fixture. Um, we've got a uh, 125 pin going through the center of that fixture, an indicator on it. You know, we've got to get this thing concentric. So you can see it's spinning. We're pretty close. Maybe three thousandths out. So I'll continue to work on it. We'll get this thing uh, centered. Okay, so we've got the part in, I've got it all located, I've got the correct angle in place, spot drills in, but what we got to do is we got to basically countersink this hole to fit this uh, 172 uh, screw, and I want to make sure I've got the right diameter. So I did the math, uh, but I'm going to do it manually just to make sure uh, before we come in, because I don't want to uh, start all over on this part. So we're going to be careful on the first one, see what the right Z dimension is to come down and then we'll take it from there. Okay, that looks good. Math works. Uh, so we'll get cutting on the part. Okay, so let's take a look what we've got. We've got the two uh, pallets drilled out countersunk looks good so the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, heat treat and harden these parts and these you just leave them uh, pure hard you don't come back and temper them so I'll go show you how we do that and try to keep everything clean so we don't get the scale on these parts uh, when we go through the uh, heat treating then the only thing left to do is to put this uh, weight make this small brass weight and then looks like we've got this escapement in pretty good shape so we'll move on to heat treat. So to do the heat treat, the first thing we need is we need some boric acid. And this is just fine, fine grain boric acid. You can buy it on Amazon anywhere. I've just got some glass wool, but you don't even need this. You can put it on anything, on a stone. You see the two pallets down here. I've got some vegetable oil. And then I've got uh, a canister of map gas. You can use propane, uh, but MAP just goes a little bit quicker because it's, it's so much hotter. So what we do is first we want to cover these parts with this boric acid. And what this does is this basically gives an atmosphere around the part. So it'll keep the oxygen away. And it will allow us to get these things cherry red hot without building up a lot of scale. Because if you get the scale, it's just hard and it's a lot of work to polish them, to polish these pallets back out. So it's
Okay, so we got these parts hard. Uh, we successfully didn't set off the smoke alarm, so that's always a good thing. Uh, you can see a little bit of scale um, on this part. And the other thing is this boric acid turns like glass, uh, and it's stuck to that part. Uh, so you can see the scale there. So, we, you know, it's not perfect, uh, but pretty good. But to get the boric acid off, all we do is I put it on the stove in, uh, in water, let that water boil, and it dissolves in boiling water. So we'll go, I'll go bring these inside, put them on the stove, uh, get this boric acid off, and just clean up that little bit of scale. And those two parts are in the books. And then I'll start on the, uh, the weight to finish this escapement. So we've got the escapement finished. You can see I've put the weight on. Uh, we got the pallets hardened, cleaned up, uh, they fixed nicely. That's so I think it came out to be a nice looking part. Um, the, the weight's adjustable and you'll see later on how this works. And it's got also adjustment on the close and the opening. Um, so this will engage uh, the escape wheel. That's all these pins. And again, I told you this is how you transfer energy from the mainspring uh, into the pendulum. So we'll see how this works later on, uh, but we're getting there.